How's it going? Dr. Ben here, uh, your friendly internet doctor dad that cares about you. Um, and it's nighttime around 10 p.m. And I just pulled out my washer to disconnect it myself because the junk guys are coming in to take it away. Um, so wish me luck. I technically can't fit through this little thing, so I'm gonna hoist myself off to this on this washer, get down, take my bucket with my trauma shears, and uh, try not to flood down my entire apartment and uh, get a liability fee. How much you, John Luke, it's unsafe. Baby, go. Good boy. All right, uh, DIY king. Wow, there's a lot of stuff back here. Ow, ow, okay. Dang, I should've worn actual pants instead of shorts. Cause I'm getting burned. That was doable. <laughs> John Luke, it's okay, baby, I'm fine. You think you can get your, my GoPro for me? This is cold. Why is it, or does this say cold but it's red and this is hot and it's blue? Jean Luc's been confused the whole time. Like, what are you doing, Dad? You're stuck in here. How are you gonna get out? Oh my God, Dad, Dad. It's okay, baby. I'm about to get out. Oh my God, y'all. I. Oh my God, y'all. Hey, Jean Luc. I am so greasy right now because I've been going at these two hoses for about 30 minutes and luckily these pliers are finally working so I got this loose just gotta do this but you know my friends call me and y'all a lot of y'all on uh, <laughs> social media call me the DIY king um, sometimes it's just not worth it <laughs> yeah oh my god thank goodness Jesus Allah, Allah, oh my god, we did it. So I cut myself pretty bad. Um, it's not, they're just superficial cuts, so it's not too bad, but this is the, this is the initial cut on my arm, and then I also have some in the back of my thigh, okay, it's not, I'm not trying to show you my booty, but I'll show y'all. I don't know if the camera can capture it, but it's all the way down my thigh, and yeah, I'm pretty uh pretty pretty upset about that because it's because the little laundry thing on the washer it got it got loose while i was trying to get off the washer and just ripped me a new one i guess um so yeah i am a scarred <laughs> a scarred diy dad now as long as it's not my face i guess or i've heard facial scars are in these days but uh yeah this is kind of this is a little rough so i'm gonna treat myself to some ice cream it's midnight now because i spent all that time doing that and then go to bed so the guys can come tomorrow and pick it up and take it from there worth it Good morning, y'all. Um, the the junk guys came about an hour ago and took the washer dryer, so it's no longer here. Thank God! I am so happy because I was really worried about getting these things removed because my apartment said I couldn't just leave it there, which um, I've been able to do at other places that I've lived at. And also my friends have been able to do it. They, they also thought it was really weird because um, my friend Monica that I lived with two years ago uh, left their washer dryer when they bought a house at their old apartment complex. And the apartment complex was more than happy to take it away from their hands because it brings in incentives for someone to come in and rent the place out. But they told me I had to remove it. I tried putting up my washer dryer on Facebook market Marketplace and to make some money, but 
for some reason, I just get kept getting really fishy people interested in my washer or dryer, and I was not comfortable um, with them coming into uh, my home and taking it because I couldn't leave it outside my door. And my Facebook profile is also very obviously, like it very obviously tells people that I am transgender. And you know, safety is my number one priority. So I thought it would be best to just pay some junk removal guys to get it removed. And also the washer wasn't, it was kind of on its dying end and I didn't feel good about selling it. The dryer was okay. It never dried anything properly. I always had to run two dry cycles. But other than that, um, it ended up costing me about $175, which is better. I mean, it was it was a lot, but it is still better than um, paying for them to also disconnect it because that would almost double the price of the removal. So I disconnected it myself. Yes, I injured myself and I am very sore today and my knees hurt, <laughs> but not my back this time around, but um, it, it was necessary and I'm glad I did it. Now, since the last vlog, uh, I know that y'all saw the initial stages of my packing, but I've been able to do so, so much uh, in the last couple of weeks. So right now the bedroom is, the bed's gone. Uh, I'm keeping the headboards, uh, the mattress is here, and I got this big cargo bag to put all my clothes in. I think I might be able to squeeze my mattress in. I'm not sure, 100%, but um, yeah that's uh that's gonna go on the top of my subaru and um that's where i'm keeping my underwear and socks for right now but <laughs> uh time will tell and my closet is pretty much let me oh jean luc's up there look at him okay my closet is pretty much packed away except for just a couple of bare essentials that i'm going to be wearing i folded up my rug and then the dining table i cut it i cut the uh, peg i took the pegs off and then i cut the pegs because what i'm going to do is i'm going to take turn it into a kotatsu dining table a sit down dining table i'm going to restain it strip it when i get to durham and it's gonna look so so good i was originally planning on getting rid of it and sending it to a thrift store but then when i was the day i was planning to take it to the thrift store i'm like this is made out of solid wood and someone made this because the paint job is kind of eh but someone used solid wood to make the top and to reinforce it so i was like this is actually really high quality materials if i were to just buy any coffee table from amazon or whatever facebook marketplace a lot of these people sell them for yes under a hundred dollars but they're usually made out of flimsy plywood this thing can last forever if I upkeep it and then every couple of years I just re, uh, refurnish it. So because it's made out of solid wood and I got it for free, all I'll have to do is take it to Durham and then restain and strip it. And it's going to be, an, uh, it's, it might be even a family heirloom even if I don't have any descendants. <laughs> so I'm going to be keeping that. I, um, move, I packed away my mirror and my TV, st uh, my TV in moving blankets so that'll be easy for transport took down the tv stand i mean we're we, we got a lot a lot done these are all the boxes i have packed so far it's maybe three or more four more boxes that i'm going to pack for this move and yeah that's pretty much it oh also i saw sawed down my entire couch so i can remove remove it and i didn't have to pay junk guys to remove the couch too which would be an extra cost so I sawed down my couch, cut the upholstery so I can use the upholstery to still have a place to sit down in. And yeah, um, I've been doing so much and I'm so satisfied with the progress. I will say though, something that I've noticed about myself in this move is that I am taking a lot longer time to do things throughout the day. And I think it's because like I've said, I've been going through a bit of a mental grieving period in my life right now and it's made me really really unmotivated to do things you'll even notice on my instagram and certain social media i'm not as active right now even though i do still try to be visible and you know interact with some of y'all but um i'm coming i feel like i'm getting better but every time i say that the next day i just have a terrible time so i don't want i don't want to keep saying i'm i'm getting better let's just, just let's just see it as moving forward with my life and 
just being vulnerable and going through it, you know? The, the more honest I am about how I'm feeling, the more I find solace in how I'm feeling. So um, even though I've taken almost three weeks to get all this progress done, and usually if I'm in a really good mood, I would have probably gotten this done in a week and a half, I am very proud of myself for getting this far. So today's an interesting day. It's the day before my graduation from medical school. I'm so, so excited and so happy, but um, my school is hosting some form of award ceremony today. And I was told, I was not gonna go, but I was told uh, through email that I am getting an award today. And I don't know what it is. I kind of have an idea of what it is, but I don't want to make any assumptions and kind of go in without any expectations. So I'm going to be getting ready for that later on today for that award. And right after the award, I'm actually driving to my friend's house. Uh, her, her name is Feroza. She's an activist here, a trans rights activist in Atlanta. And we're going to have my grad party and it's going to be a great time. So before that, I have a couple of hours left. What I'm going to do is I have one last prescription to pick up before my move to Durham. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to go over to PetSmart and get some disposable litter boxes for John Luke because I'm not going to take that three-year-old litter box to me in my car uh, all the way to Durham. It'll, it's going to be a miserable time for me, probably a miserable time for John Luke too. So I just got back from running my errands for the morning. I ended up not finding any disposable cat litter boxes that were close to me, but I got a really cheap $6 one from Target for John Luke. It's right there. So he's gonna have that for his first couple of days before I get him a nicer one. Cause this boy makes a huge mess if he doesn't have something that's more enclosed because he loves to dig around in that litter. <laughs> Which is kind of gross, John Luke. Why would you do that? Um, but you know, uh, I'm gonna just let him do his business. Um, I still haven't put on my graduation gown before graduation, so I think it might be a great time to do a little bit of a graduation fit on video just to see how I look like, but also show y'all uh, how ridiculous this gown is, and I hope I'm not drowning in it. So this is the uh, um, PhD doctor hat uh, for higher level professional degrees. It's not the square type that you usually see. It's more of an octagon. There's already a couple of cat hairs in it. Um, can't run away from that. I'm, I'm, John Luke might as well be graduating with me or parts of him might as well be graduating with me because he's helped me so much throughout the years. And here's that bright green I was telling you about. It's like a forest, forest green color. So I'm gonna put on the hat and surprisingly the hat fits me pretty okay, I think. Oh, Jesus Christ. You know, if I have thick hair and I have a hard time putting on this hat, I can only imagine how hard it is for people with uh, 4B and 4C hair. Uh, does it look okay? It looks kind of lopsided to me. Maybe I gotta push this down. Ah, oh, okay, there you go. Ah, uh, okay. How do I look? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I need to see, I need to see. Oh, it's not too bad, it's not too bad. Yo, y'all, I'm, I'm kind of rocking it, you know? Giving magistrate cheek. <laughs> and this right here is the gown. Um, you'll see that the arms are super flared with three green stripes right here. I don't know what that means. Maybe like bachelor's, master's, and professional degree. I think that's what it stands for. I don't know, I might have to look all of this up. Um, Y'all know I'm first gen, so I really don't care about any of these semantics. Um, here it is, and then there's some green stripes that go down the gown. So uh, let's put it on. I got the size for five, three to five, four people. So hopefully I don't look too bad. All right, all right, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> I don't look that bad. I don't think I look that bad. Y'all think I look cute? I think I look pretty cute. This will be the fit, right? Do I have to close it? I totally forgot my graduation. My actually undergrad graduation uh, got canceled in the middle of it because it started raining and they wanted to do it at the new stadium the school built. Um, but I think I do have to close it, right y'all? Yeah. That makes sense. And the zipper is stuck because this was the cheap version of the PhD. Oh, no, no, the zipper's fine. I'm just stupid. Um, let's put this on. Center my tie. And here you go. 
Dr. Van Hassin. <laughs> oh my God, I will never wear this again once I'm done with graduation. All right, I'm gonna take a look at myself. Oh my God, okay, who is he, who is he? Yo, I think this is a good fit. I honestly don't care about graduation that much. So uh, this is this is what my uh, what my family will get and what my school will get and my classmates will get and I am completely happy with this. So um, I guess the next time I'll put it on and the only time I'll ever put it on is tomorrow. And I just got ready for the award ceremony. This is my fit. I think I look pretty spiffy. Uh, if I say so myself and yeah uh, We'll find out what award that I'm getting and then right after the award ceremony I might even have to leave a little early, but right after the award ceremony Damn, I look so good <laughs> I'm going to head straight over to my grad party Hey y'all good morning. It's Sunday morning two days after the award ceremony one day after graduation My pay place looks like a mess. I'm sorry about that, but it is my last day um, fully living in Atlanta. Tomorrow I move uh, to Durham, literally two days after graduation. It's uh, It's been a hectic week, um, but I wanted to film through most of my award ceremony and uh, graduation. That is overtly ambitious because of how busy things, busy and chaotic things get. But during the award ceremony, I won two very, very special awards. The first one, uh, was the award in community service, community health and service. Um, this was given uh, to me by a board of community health and preventive medicine providers at Morehouse who have built a relationship with my four years there. My biggest mentor at Morehouse is Dr. Carrie Roth Bayer. She's an amazing woman and she's literally one of the reasons why I was I had such a successful interview cycle because she let me create my own research studies as a medical student and publish them as first authors and she's really believed in me the last four years i mean i've had a lot of pushback for being who i am at my school but there are those little lights those glimmer of lights that continue to believe in me and continue to make way waves for me to do the work that i do so um she and her group of other community health providers at my school believe that i have not just taken a community health course but taking that mission and just elevated it to a new level and i really appreciate that they acknowledge me for that ah, feels so good <laughs> and then this one was unexpected <laughs> honestly I, I i knew that if i didn't get any form of like humanitarian or community service award my school is just doing me dirty <laughs> but um you know there are professors that believe in me and really watch for me to get this award and I'm so proud of. But this this next award was completely unexpected. I had no, no idea that I was going to get it and I was very surprised that an award such as this exists. But it is the Kent Allen Pindle Smith uh, Memorial Scholarship and Award. Uh, it's, a, it's a monetary award so there's a scholarship involved with it. Um, I don't know how much it is right now um, but for the sake of like you know uh, protecting my own uh, assets and I uh, identification I'll probably not share how much the monetary uh, um, amount is if I learn what how much it is but it, this is named after uh, mr. Kent Allen Pindle Smith who uh, was the partner the late partner of a uh, husband of a doctor and he dedicated the end of his life the last uh, couple of years of his life to helping um, incarcerated pa uh, patients who have severe mental illness get the care that they need and continue to advocate for incarcerated patients for their freedom and I am so like this means a lot to me because all medical schools have this hu uh, humanism and medicine award called the Leonard Toe Award I did not get it at my school and the reason why I believe I didn't get it because the Leonard Toe Humanism and Medicine Award is technically a popularity contest. It's it by a nomination. And as y'all know in my previous videos that uh, my reputation at my school um, with 
those who are progressive is very good, but a large part of my administration is very conservative and don't really like the, the fact that I talk so much about LGBTQ rights. So uh, when I entered medical school, it was my dream to get the Leonard Tao Award, but I didn't know the semantics behind it. It's a popularity contest more than actually acknowledging the person who does the most com humanitarian work um, from your school in medicine. So this scholarship, this scholarship acknowledged the fact that I continue to fight for those who are invisible. And someone, I don't know who, <laughs> nominated me for this award, but someone saw that in me and nominated me for it. And I am incredibly, incredibly grateful. And the fact that it is named after someone who cared that much about incarcerated patients, speechless. So after the award ceremony, I went to my grad party. It was beautiful. It was amazing. The chicken tacos were so good. Nomi, you're amazing. I love you. Um, my friends really came through, brought a bunch of food. We had a great time. I got a little, a little tipsy in the beginning. I knew I wanted to get a little tipsy um, before I had to sober up for the night and not get a hangover the next day because graduation was the next day. I went, ended up going home around midnight and then went to bed around 1 a.m. and woke up at 6 a.m. the next morning with five hours of sleep for graduation. And graduation was so, so long. I was super, super dehydrated. I was incredibly hungry. And a part of me never wanted to go to graduation because like I've said, my mental health has not been that great. I haven't even been able to celebrate myself for at least two months. I, like being super, super vulnerable, I've been so sad about so many things that have happened in the last couple of weeks that I've cried cried at least once a day and I look disheveled most of the time I feel like <laughs> um, and during the beginning of graduation I was feeling that way like why am I here why should I even celebrate myself I'm garbage I'm a garbage person and like, I know people you who are watching this are like Ben don't think of yourself like that but when you are in a headspace like that it kind of overcomes everything that you're feeling and then uh, obviously I was dehydrated and hungry so that those feelings started like getting more and more intense throughout graduation but then when I was sitting um, on the stage and waiting for my name to be called I realized that like I think I had a bit of an epiphany and I was like you know regardless of what's been happening the last eight weeks of my life I have worked so hard for this. I have gone through so much adversity for this. I literally was a kid who immigrated from to the U US from Bangladesh. My parents don't have uh, higher level degrees. I worked my butt off in high school while getting bullied um, by people of my religion and my ethnicity for who I was. I, I, went, I went through almost losing my sister in high school and through all of that and even coming out as trans and facing what i do now i have made it and i am one of the if not first bengali american trans doctors the world has ever seen and that is something to be celebrated and it's not something i should be ashamed of so then i started thinking a lot about why am i sad i'm sad because someone some people in my life uh, in the last couple of weeks have not been present and one of those people are so, is someone I know I have known since middle school but I also have my best friend Angela who I've known since I was nine she was the first person I talked to that I remember talking to when I first came down to Georgia and Angela was there for my grad uh, grad celebration she was there for my match day celebration she's come through and she's a great friend and those are the friends I need to keep around I also have another friend that I've known through middle school who messaged me and wanted to get lunch and I've been there for her in a really dark time in her life and she's been there for me those are the people that I cherish but I shouldn't hold so much weight on people who don't appreciate me and people who think badly of me why should I keep them in my life because regardless of how I am as a person I could be the nicest person in the world to someone but I could also be the devil to someone else and I have to come to terms with that and I shouldn't just I shouldn't just focus so hard on how much of a bad person I am because as 
as someone like as a human being i'm going to do things that other people don't like i'm going to do things that other people criticize me for but the only thing i can stand by is the fact that i fight hard for the people that i care about and yes i will make mistakes but so will everyone else and that's what i'm going to stand by Anyways, I know I've been talking for a long time. My friends are about to come over because this is my last day to really pack. I'm gonna get started packing and uh, we'll see how much we get done. Uh, I think I packed about 70% of my stuff. So it should be a pretty simple day today. It's just all of this disarray needs to be gone. <laughs> for the vlog. Oh my god, y'all, it's been an hour, and my friend Toph and Natalie just came, and the bed is completely shrink-wrapped and put in my car. The Outback still has so much space left for me to store things, so essentially, in addition to the mattress that we put into my Outback, we had a six-foot-long rug that was in my living room that we were able to squeeze in, and also, we were able to squeeze in three of my boxes with plenty of space left so i'm gonna spend since they the, since they helped me with the biggest like things that i needed to do with more um more than one person i'm gonna start packing other stuff and putting in the outback and i'll show y'all the final the final look of the outback and how much i'm able to fit in good morning y'all it is 8 a.m uh, Monday morning and I'm all packed and ready to go unfortunately the safe did not fit of out of the things I wanted to fit in my car but it's okay we can get that on the second round back I just took the two most important identification documents which is my passport and social security card with me and my and my car's glove box and the last thing to pack is my little John Luke uh, and he was already in the in there but I think he knows I'm gonna take him for five, on a five hour uh, journey so uh, he's already not looking forward to it so um my car is completely filled to the brim right now and hopefully uh it's an easy drive i downloaded some audiobooks and it's hopefully it's gonna go really really smooth hopefully <laughs> so this is all that i was able to pack in my car the upwards cargo bag held all my clothes and you see, I have my mattress. I have a bunch of boxes. I was also able to stuff little things in and out. When you open the passenger doors, it's full of stuff. But I'm so happy we got what we need for the Bear Essentials for the first trip to Durham, North Carolina. Good morning, everyone. It is the day after. It's Tuesday. It's the day after moving into Durham. I am in my apartment now that I'm going to be living in for at least a year maybe the uh, four years I am here um, in for residency and maybe even more if I do a second residency or fellowship here in Durham if I like it enough. But uh, I really love this apartment, it's great. Yesterday was so, so ridiculous. I need to tell y'all a story because so many things happen. So first of all, um, the drive to Durham, it's typically around five to five and a half hours uh, on a tip on, normal conditions but the thing is, is that remember i put a huge cargo bag on top of my car and we used the moving straps and the ratcheting straps uh turns out while i was just outside of atlanta maybe 30 minutes outside of atlanta i'm driving my car and i hear a bunch of rattling <laughs> and then i start freaking out because it's not coming from inside the car it's coming from outside the car i look in my side mirrors and one of the ratchets literally flew off and started rattling and dangling and hitting the side of my car and i immediately freaked out i pulled over to the side of the road and i got out of my car it was so dangerous and turns out um i had to ask my brother to ratchet down the um straps because i couldn't reach it i'm, I'm shorter than him and I asked him to do it and one of the straps he let a little too loose so it just <laughs> flew everywhere. Unfortunately, I don't have a three-step stool. I wish I'd gotten it because I would have done it myself. My brother kind of just winged it and said, oh, it's good to go. But um, I'm so glad that nobody got injured, nobody got hurt. John Luke was in the car with me, which made me so, so guilty because he was like, what the heck is happening? And uh, I couldn't get the 
loose straps out um, up, from up top because I was too short. <laughs> so what I ended up doing is I ended up tucking it inside under the cargo bag. And then I was like, maybe I should turn around. Maybe I should cancel the move in day and do another day. But I was already so far out of uh, Atlanta proper and I, I was over it. John Luke was already miserable. Um, so I was like, you know what? We're just gonna go very, very slowly. So I drove, instead of going the typical 70 miles per hour to Durham, I drove around 50 miles per hour to Durham. So it turned my five and a half hour trip to an eight hour trip. It was ridiculous. I was so tired and so hungry. I stopped for no breaks because I knew Jean-Luc was in the car with me and I did not want him to go through that. I wanted to get him to a safe environment as soon as possible. He was such a good boy, y'all. Like I didn't give him any sedatives. Uh, I tried to give him Benadryl, but like he didn't eat it. Um, so he just stayed quiet the whole ride, even when I was freaking out. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm so, so grateful. And then after I got here, uh, even more ridiculous things happened. Uh, when I came out and I started putting stuff in my apartment, uh, I noticed that after a while, I, I didn't see Jean-Luc anymore. So I started looking around for him. I couldn't find him anywhere in the apartment. And then I was like, oh my God, I lost my best friend because of the stupid move. Maybe he might have escaped while I had the door open for a little bit. But like I was making sure every time that he wasn't going out. So I was just very concerned. So I started running around this apartment, yelling out his name, yelling out his favorite word, S-N-A-C-K. And he wasn't coming. And I was like, I was about to have a mental breakdown at that point <laughs> oh my god and then i ran out the apartment and i started yelling out his name outside in the open air <laughs> the neighbors already think i'm the weirdo <laughs> but um i did not care like i was not going to lose jean luc if i lost jean luc and i went through all of this and my mental state right now i don't know what i would have done honestly um but turns out he just climbed behind the dryer and did not know how to get back up from there so I ended up having to pull out the dryer and uh, I was already exhausted by the way bodily exhausted pull out the dryer and got him out and then he's no longer allowed in the laundry room anymore I was, he was he could he was able to go to the laundry room in my previous apartment because it was flush against the back so he couldn't go back there but this place there's actually a bit of a gap he can jump under it from this ledge so he's not allowed in there um, and then I was just so, so exhausted and I still had so much stuff to do. I ended up having to order food because I didn't have any food on me. And yeah, um, by the time I was done, I had no energy to film at all and I needed a shower. So I had to run over to Target and get some Bay Essentials for me to take a good, good shower. I'm still wearing a hat because um, I'm just so sore today. Like I'm beyond sore and Somehow I was able to drag the mattress in here by myself. <laughs> um, thank you for my ability to lift really heavy weights because I go to the gym, but also the fact that this apartment is on the ground floor. It's, it's not on the basement floor, luckily, but it is on the ground floor. And so far, I really, really love this place. So y'all, that's pretty much it for this vlog. Uh, I can't believe graduation was literally like two days ago. It feels like it's, it's been a week because I've been doing so much. But I've managed to unpack all this stuff. In addition to the mattress, I still have all of this stuff to unpack. So uh, it's going to be a very, very busy week before I head down again on this weekend uh, to get part two of my stuff. So I hope you all enjoyed this vlog. Next time, I hope you see this place a little bit more furnished. But um, thank you all so much for coming on this little road trip with me, which was very, very harrowing and kind of scary, but we did it. Google Fiber is set up. I have the two gig service. I'm so, so excited. It's gonna make uploading videos for you all so much better and faster. And uh, I'm just so excited to live here. I already love the Durham area. I've been driving a little bit around. There's no traffic and uh, starting the next chapter of my life and you know I have been sad for the last two months ish and ongoing but after graduation I feel like I've just have a new sense of self-worth and you know I understand that I'm not a perfect human being and I have flaws but what I do 
love about myself is that this constant empathy that I have to give to others and give to the people that I love and prioritizing the people that are important to me. I will go above and beyond for them and I want to live with that and I want to be proud of that. And I won't let anybody, anybody tell me that I'm not that kind of person. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next vlog slash video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and activism work. And I'll see you all in the next video. This is Dr. Ben.